morning, Sweetwater family. Buddy Parrish here in front of our Easter cross, welcoming you to our Easter celebration. We are so glad that you are with us virtually and spiritually there in your own homes. God bless you and thank you for being a part of our Easter worship today. Whether you're here in Central Florida as part of our regular Sweetwater family or our adopted family all over the world, God bless you and welcome as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle take what does it take to fix it all to make it all right the title of this Easter Sunday morning sermon is for God so loved the primary text is John 3 16 and 17 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for all of my brothers and sisters around the world who are gathering here with us. I pray for our Sweetwater family and for those who are watching 
no matter where they are, as we celebrate, all of us, the birth, resurrection, life of Jesus Christ. For you so loved the world, you gave your only Son. The Word became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he went to the cross for us. He was laid in a tomb. And because of your great love, the power of your love, you raised him up. Through Christ, death was overcome. Sin is defeated. And we, as we believe in him, have eternal life. Thank you, Father, for your presence here with us. Wherever we may be, your presence is with us as we worship together today, as we celebrate the resurrection, the victory of Jesus Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. The gospel writers tell us that it was early in the morning when the women left to go to the tomb of Jesus. Everything had happened so suddenly so unexpectedly that Jesus' family and friends were all unprepared, unprepared in every way. On Thursday night at the Passover supper, Jesus had given them bread and told them this was his body. And he gave them the cup and again told them that this was his blood and that this blood was the new covenant but none of them understood it. It had been an amazing week, a wonderful week. Why would any of them be thinking anything seriously bad would happen? And when the supper was over, they went out into the garden. And Jesus asked them to wait while he went a little further to pray. Nothing unusual about that. It was late. They had full bellies. And staying awake was hard. And then, and then, everything exploded. Temple guards appeared out of nowhere. They arrested Jesus and took him to the house of the high priest, where they had some kind of kangaroo court trial. The next morning, they dragged Jesus before Pilate, the Roman governor, and there was something of a second trial. And before any of Jesus' family and friends could respond, the Romans were laying a cross on his shoulder and forcing Jesus to carry it outside the gates of Jerusalem to a hill called Calvary, where they crucified him. They nailed, nailed his hands and feet to the cross. And by the ninth hour, 3 p.m., Jesus of Nazareth, was dead. And so, just now, let's take a moment to pause and to gather in front of us the elements of the Lord's Supper. He had told them that this was his body and this was his blood. And so let us fully prepare our hearts for worship, to focus on the body and blood of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Let's pray together. Father, how great your love for us, that you would not spare your only son, so many times when we are in difficulty, we think, surely God wouldn't let this happen to me, but surely he let his only son go to the cross to suffer and die for us, taking the sins of the world, my sins, all of our sins, on himself, so that we could be forgiven. And so they took his body and they nailed it to a cross, letting him die a slow and painful death 
hour upon hour, nailed to that cross. And his blood was spilled out from a crown of thorns around his brow to the nails in his hands and his feet and a spear that pierced his side and the beatings that he took. His blood poured out, washing us clean of all of our sin. And so, Father, in a moment, as we take a cup and some bread, speak to our hearts, Lord Jesus. And so, Father, let us take some time to pray. To pray that we will have strength for a time such as this. To pray that we will have grace and mercy. To pray, Father, that we will search our own hearts and ask you to forgive us, to confess our sins to you, and to be forgiven, made whole, made new, through the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Be with us, Lord, in Christ's name.
the Apostle Paul gives us the earliest account of the Lord's Supper in his first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 11. He says in verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, I thank you for the body of Christ, the word that became flesh and pitched his tent among us, who lived with us, walked with us, ate as we ate, drank as we drank, laughed as we laughed, lived as we lived. He endured every temptation. He understood every pain. So because he came in the body, as we pray, you know what we're feeling. You know our, our fears, our pains, our sorrows, our sufferings, our joys, our triumphs. Because you live through Christ, you understand our very hearts, and your Holy Spirit searches our hearts and knows our needs. And so, Father, thank you for sending your only Son to us in the body and presence of Jesus Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we thank you for the blood of Christ, not the blood of some animal, not in the days of of Abraham or Moses, where a blood of a, a ram or a lamb was taken. No, this is the blood of your only son. This is the blood of Jesus. The new covenant is in his blood. He is the ultimate sacrifice. For through him, you were able to accomplish what the blood of rams could never accomplish. He paid a debt he did not owe. My debt. Our debt. His blood was poured out for many. Not my blood. Not anyone else's blood. For my blood or the blood of other people was never going to be enough. Only his blood because only the Son of God, God himself, could be the forgiver of sins. And so thank you, Father, for the body and blood of Jesus as we celebrate his resurrection this Easter day. For it is in Christ's name that we pray. Living with uncertainty can take its toll. The normal day-to-day -day is replaced with fear, worry, doubt. When our normal is disrupted, our surroundings begin to feel weak. Foundations begin to rattle. Our lives become disoriented. As time goes on, we begin to lose sight of the one constant on our journey. Jesus. The fear is consuming, the worry draining, the doubt painful. Even in our darkest moments, when the last thread of hope has unraveled from our being, we must dwell on truth. 
We must remember, no matter what is happening around us, God is still sovereign. Today, let us dwell on the truth of Easter. The stone has been rolled away. The grave has been rendered powerless. Death has transformed to life. In our fear, He is still risen. In our worry, He is still victorious. In our doubt, He is still alive. When everything seems hopeless, the hope of Easter remains. Because it was so late in the day, that Friday, three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus' family wanted to get him buried as quickly as possible. The Sabbath started at six, and if the body was not buried before then, it would have to stay on the cross until Sunday morning. Quickly, word was sent to Pilate that Jesus was dead and a request, request was made to take the body. Quickly, a friend was found who would allow Jesus to be laid in a grave that he owned. Quickly, the body was taken down from the cross and hurriedly wrapped and carried to a borrowed tomb. There was no time to prepare the body. There was no time to properly anoint the body for burial. It was all so surreal. So early, early on Sunday, just after six, the moment that the Sabbath was over, while it was still dark, the women left to go to the tomb of Jesus with fresh linens, spices, and ointments. But they were still not fully prepared. The tomb was sealed by a great stone that might take several men to move. Further, it was sealed shut by Pilate's authority, so that opening the tomb literally was a federal offense. And more, there were guards in place to ensure that no one would violate the Roman seal or disturb the tomb. Halfway there, all this dawned on the women. And Mark 16, 3 tells us, that it was then the women asked a question that was deeper than they knew. Who will roll away the stone for us? Forever there have been stones laid before us to keep us from being where we need to be, that keep us from doing what we need to do. No one is born thinking, I'm going to live a failed life, or I'm going to choose evil and not good. Stones get in our way. We begin with hopes and dreams, but stones can bar our path and crush our highest hopes, our most precious dreams. We set goals, but stones prevent us from achieving those goals. And where do these stones come from? These are Satan's stones. Stones of sin, stones of death, stones to force you from God's path. Stones to block you from God's will for your life. Stones to close behind you and lock you in darkness. Who will roll away the stone for us? What strength is there that is greater than all our strength? Love. God's love. God's love for you is greater than any other strength or power on earth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The women arrive at the tomb to find the stone already cast aside, the love of God for you had already gone ahead of them and tossed aside the great stone of sin and death. Mark 16, 5 through 7 tells us that the, woman, the women entered the tomb and found Jesus gone and an angel who looked like a young man sitting there calmly. 
Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, He's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. God's love for you is a strength greater than any stone, any material power ever set before us. With God, all things are possible. God's love is greater than any political power. The world's greatest empire may have legally sealed the tomb shut. But that is nothing compared to the love of God for you. God's love for you is such that he is willing to send his only son to suffer and die on a cross so that the giant stone of sin and death would forever be rolled away. For those who believe in him, the love of God has already gone ahead of us to toss aside the stone of sin and death. Our sins are gone and death has no power over us. Whatever stone is set in your way, a coronavirus stone, an employment stone, a financial stone, a stone of failing health, the stone of a broken relationship, the stone of sin, whatever stone there may be, the truth of Easter is that God's love for you is so great that none of these stones can stand. Trust in him. Believe in him. Even when your mind is clouded, even when it's dark, even when your heart is heavy. Indeed, these are the times to trust in him the most. Discover the joy of his great love for you as he rolls away these stones. This past week, our brother Jim, Jim Bales, went to be with the Lord. He is celebrating Easter with Jesus today. Jim had been fighting cancer these last five years, longer than I've known him. But Jim was ever faithful. The closer Jim got to the door leading to heaven, the stronger his faith became. Every Wednesday night, as long as he was physically able, Jim was there at our prayer time and Bible study. And he would always ask for prayer for others. He would ask for revival. He would ask for prayers for the church. He would ask for prayers for our nation. And he would never ask for himself. Others would. Others would say, Pastor, tell me how my friend Jim is doing. And I would look over at him and I would say, Well, Jim, how are you doing? And in the midst of the unbearable pain, so much so that he was hardly able to sit and barely able to stand and struggled to just put one foot in front of him. This man who had been an army ranger who would parachute and jump behind enemy lines in Iraq in the early days of the war, struggling just to be able to sit, stand, and take a few steps, he would look at me and smile and say, I'm fine. And leave it at that because he knew he was fine he knew that like all of us his body was one day going to fail and that his spirit would leave the essence of really who he is would leave this the shell behind and go and be with the one who breathed life into him to go and be with Christ so no matter what we can face, we can truly, with Christ in our hearts, say with Jim, I'm fine because of what Christ has done for me on the cross, because of what God has done for me when he raised that Jesus from the dead. Sin and death have been overcome. For God so loved the world, for God so loved you, you. He removed all the stones Satan has set before you. So you may go exactly where he needs you to go to do exactly what he needs you to do, to be exactly who he needs you to be. 
and you will have eternal life and you will be saved through him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are mightier than the stones, stones of sin, stones of death, stones that block our path, stones that lock us inside a cell of death and darkness. You are mightier than all of that. You are greater than any seal, any power would hope to lock us away in. Nothing can keep us from your love. Nothing can prevent us, neither height nor depth, nor angels nor principalities, nothing, life nor death, nothing can keep us from your love. That is your promise. And so, Father, we thank you for being with us on this marvelous, wonderful Easter Sunday, a day of celebration. Our Savior lives. And as we believe in him, we will see him face to face one day. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for this wonderful, wonderful Easter celebration. For it is in the name of Christ our Savior we pray. Amen. I bow my knee where your blood was 
Thank you for being a part of our Easter worship today. May God be with you and bless you and all of your friends and family, your neighbors, all of those who you meet. Be the blessing to them as God uses you. Thank you for your faithful support of our church in this very unusual and difficult time. Thank you for all of your blessings and prayers. Truly, I can tell you for myself and our staff, we have felt them as we have prayed for you. And so God bless you. God bless you on this Easter Sunday, and we look forward to seeing you again. Be with us on Wednesday night as we gather together on Facebook Live for our Bible study time and other Bible study times on Sunday morning and around the week. Uh, look for us on Thursday for Facebook Live Wednesday night time being posted then, and we just ask you to continue to stay connected. Let us hear from you. Uh, help us to know how to pray for you. Thank you for your support. In Christ's name we pray. Three, two, one. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter! That wasn't bad. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we stink it wasn't that. quick. <laughs> Three, two, one. Happy, Happy Easter! Easter. Oh, we gotta do that again. Three, two, one. He is, he, risen. Is risen. he is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Here we go. Three, two, one. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. <laughs> Listen, don't drag the word Easter out. Just say it. Happy Easter. Okay. Are we going to do it again? Easter. Yes. Okay. We got a minute. Ready to record. Ready. Three, two, one. Happy, Happy Easter! Easter. <laughs>